gang, we're two and a half hours in. I promised that uh, I was going to just give you a short little comment regarding what's going on, uh, like the MT or Salvia Donorum, uh, tell you what's going on, uh, just perspective on what's happening with our global map there that's behind the cannabis plants, specifically regarding uh, what's been happening in Israel and Palestine in the last couple of days, right, since yesterday and kicked off it's going to kick off higher and higher uh if you look at our um mapping global conflicts map i think we're up to part six part seven part eight right now or something like this we talked a lot about what was coming and how everything was going to play out and possibly play out right uh possibly play out because we don't really know we're taking a guess and based on the economics we're seeing the movement of money rhetoric uh war stands uh, centralized power what they're doing to their own citizens and what they're doing to other uh other citizens of other nations right and uh, specifically what's happened in israel and palestine a lot of people have been you know giving their commentary i've been listening to some in the last couple of days uh live streams and people giving their commentary and stuff like this they're specifically most people are specifically just focused on what's going on between israel palestine lebanon uh syria and stuff like this but what's happening is a play on a bigger game right you can think of this global map behind there as a grand chessboard. And right now there's a lot of pieces being played, right? And this is just one piece that is being played. It's a pretty heavy piece, but it is just one piece. And it is uh, very much, very much linked up to how, what has been happening in Ukraine. And the very much direct con connection that a lot of people I haven't really heard anyone talk about this in the last couple of days connected to what has happened in the Caucasus over the last year two three years right which is basically what has happened between Armenia and Azerbaijan this is one just one one angle I think uh, people need to consider right one angle one serious heavy duty angle you need to consider right is what has happened between Armenia and Azerbaijan is a proxy war where Israel has been using Azerbaijan as a proxy to attack Iran, as well as Azerbaijan using Israeli intelligence, Israeli military to deal with their Armenian problem, right? Which is basically wanting to commit genocide, right? So, in the last three years with the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan has attacked Armenia with the help of Turkey, but with huge support from Israel, weapons, aid, as well as intelligence on the ground, IDF soldiers on the ground. But the attack on Armenia is not just an attack on Armenia, it's an attack on Iran because Armenia, Iran, and Russia that's a connection there, right? And Iran cannot afford to have Azerbaijan start taking territory away from Iran more than the Wurna Karabakh. The Wurna Karabakh is genocide taking place right now in real time. Like people are going hoo ha 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 about Israel and Palestine. You have to appreciate that in the last few weeks, you've had 100,000 100, plus Armenians going on the march, leaving the, and their ancestral homeland because. Azerbaijan is going in there with the help of Israel and Turkey to exterminate the Armenians, exterminate the history, exterminate the land, exterminate any 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 history of Armenians that has been there for thousands of years, by the way, right? So I don't see the world freaking out about what Azerbaijan, Israel, and Turkey did to Armenia, but they are extremely very much freaking out about what's going on with Palestine and Israel, and that is a big deal. But one of the reasons that's happening is because Israel has been using Azerbaijan as a proxy to attack Iran because that is a direct attack on Iran. Because Azerbaijan, there's a section of Iran in the northern part of Iran, it's called 
Iranian Azerbaijan and there is no way Iran will ever allow that area to have any turmoil or go in the direction of losing control of that area where in the future people there might want to join with Azerbaijan or Azerbaijan might say hey that's our territory as well because those are Azerbaijanis right and there's a corridor between that Armenia controls right now that connects Azerbaijan to Turkey which Azerbaijan is now saying that they want and Iran has said no fucking way right and the attack on Armenia is also a direct attack on Russia right so Russian interests in the Caucasus are pretty serious so that area is going to blow sky high i've been saying this for a number of years now that that area is going to blow sky high so what's happening in palestine and israel is directly linked up to that it's not a coincidence that that took place the tension is rising there and this occurred right now in connection with assad from syria going to china and china embracing syria right so you have to look at the grander picture where China has come in and trying to broker a peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And keep in mind what is happening in Palestine and Israel. You have Hamas and you have Hezbollah in northern Israel, in Lebanon, right? While Israel is controlling the Golan Heights, is Syrian land, right? And Hezbollah and Hamas, Sunni, Shia, Shia, Sunni, either way, it doesn't matter. Remember, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Shia, Shia, Sunni, but they're beginning to come to terms with their differences with joining the BRICS, China brokering a peace deal, Saudi Arabia with OPEC plus, with Russia saying, hey, you can't put, West can't put a price cap on oil, right? At the same time, you have a shit ton of money and weapons going to Ukraine, huge percent of, percentage of which never made it to the front lines in Ukraine because we we're going to be annihilated. And Ukraine being one of the most corrupt countries in the world, if not the most corrupt country in the world right now, right? The most corrupt country in Europe by a long shot, right? Most people already realize that most of those weapons many of those weapons like we're talking some people are estimating 40 some people are estimating to up to 75 percent 70 percent of the weapons that were sent to ukraine never made it to the front lines in ukraine they were sold off right where were they sold off some people are saying oh they were sent to palestine no they weren't sent to palestine they sold it to the highest bidder right where do you think Zelensky and all those canadian Canadian Parliament cheering these NAZIs, right? Where do you think they've bought all these houses and mansions where they parked their money? What FTX cryptocurrencies? Where do you think all those cryptocurrency funds have gone? Where has all this money from the Western world, nine billion dollars from Canada, hundreds of billions of dollars from the United States, tens of billion dollars from Europe? Where do you think all that money's gone? Do you think all that money's gone to the front lines of Ukraine? Hell no, right? So a lot of everything that's going on, okay, it's all connected. Israel and Palestine is not an island on its own. A lot of people are saying, oh, Hamas was prepared to do this. Uh, they've been preparing to do this for months upon months and they were going to do it. Not necessarily. It's like saying uh, a nation that is prepared for war is going to go to war right it's saying that a nation a people don't have the right to prepare to retaliate to any type of aggression right so anyone coming out and saying Hamas had been planning this to do this exact thing for multiple months and they were going to do it on the anniversary of this and this and this i don't think they're really understanding that just because a nation attacks another nation it doesn't mean that they had planned on attacking that nation at that time it may mean that they were just building up the defenses building up their attacking capabilities just in case they needed to use them right look into what happened in the alaska mosque 
a few days ago with 800 something uh, uh, what do you call it uh, occupiers that uh, settlers going into one of the holiest places in Islam that's ridiculous what a provocation that would have been right not that anything like this is justified what's going on is horrendous is crimes there are war crimes being committed there's no doubt about it Hamas is committing war crimes there are fighters committing war crimes right you can't behead people you can't take civilians hostage and torture them abuse them use them use them as human hostages human shields right but that is human shields is something Israel has used for decades right using Palestinians as human shields you don't believe it look it up right so war crimes Hamas is committing war crimes but Israel has committed countless war crimes throughout history okay throughout the number of decades collective punishment is a war crime and Israel is now saying that they're going to collectively punish uh, 2.1 million people that reside in the Gaza Strip the most densely populated place on planet Earth right so my take on all this is as a Canadian all 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 quote okay Maxime Bernier from the People's Party of Canada okay and this is Maxime Bernier's quote from People's Party of Canada quote here I'll link it up for those of you on rumble and twitch okay um, oops here here's the link to twitch apologies if I'm not reading the chat I just because it's so complicated I need to uh, state what I need to state without uh, reading the comments I, and I mucked it up a little bit it needs to be put into context and we will talk about it in uh, on our global conflict map right but this is what Maxime Bernier said and I 100% agree with this and I know Palestinians uh, in the Arab world will disagree with this and Israelis will disagree with this but as a Canadian uh, I quote Maxime Bernier some people quote some people have been asking my asking my position on the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. It's simple. I don't want a single penny of Canadian taxpayer money to go to support either side of another foreign war that has nothing to do with us. End quote. Okay. You could say I 99% agree with this because it has something to do with us, unfortunately, because we have been a party to this ridiculous conflict that has been taking place for a number of decades and um, tremendous mistakes have been made okay tremendous mistakes have been made that's my take okay we'll expand on this on future uh, global conflict map uh, when we go on in front of this after we take down the cannabis plants uh, and it's if you want to know our take we've talked a lot about this from the previous streams that we did regarding global conflicts uh, and what was brewing and what was coming and we mentioned this multiple times on multiple streams that this area was going to blow sky high and we're at the beginning stage of stages of it by the way this is not the end game this is not the the beginning of it it began many many years ago and it's not going to end after israel commits the war crimes that they're about to commit or hamas continues to commit the war crimes that they're about to commit or when the war expands to lebanon and syria or when the caucasus explode okay that's my take i'm gonna catch up with the chat game i'm gonna get caught up with the chat just uh, make sure your words are heard okay uh platonic plurus in some way peace in the middle east uh near middle east uh could could be not so far away as iran is taking uh, talking with saudi arabia israel is in in improving relations with arab states and BRICS is connecting uh different um platonic plurus i agree with you regarding saudi arabia and iran 
But no, I don't think the West is going to go quietly into the night with their control of the Middle East. I think they're going to burn the place down. They're going to go scorched earth, which they are. Okay. Uh, Romas, I'm with you on this topic, Chicho. Thank you, Romas. I'm glad. Uh, we want peace, man. We don't want conflict. Plutonic players. But, and this is on Rumble. I'm catching up with the chat on Rumble Gang first, and then I'll head up Twitch. Just more chat on Twitch. Plutonic players. But the question of the so-called Palestinian territories is still to be taken on uh, diplomatically. Yeah. Yeah. Romas, this would have never happened under a Trump presidency. Uh, well, time well time to sear my steak and consume. What a wonderful day, you all. You too. Have a wonderful day as well, Ramos. Thank you for popping in. Elder God, I prefer the website on Rumble. Do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Ramos. I'm going to get caught up with the chat on uh, Twitch. Uh, uh, Elder God says Palestine versus Israel is a fairly one-sided. Yeah, but it's not just Palestine anymore. This is a grander game, and it's a bringing in all kinds of players all kinds of players lonely piggy it's also nothing new right every few years it explodes into something ever, yeah, even bigger yeah yeah agreed lonely piggy alfida yes also a subject use lip what is that elder god i don't know that word zoot one must assume Saudi Arabia coming very close, cutting a deal with Israel has a lot to do with Hamas waking up again. Um, Zut, I don't think Israel, uh, Saudi Arabia was close to cutting a deal with Israel. Sa I think one of the reasons this thing happened in large part, um, well, I don't know if in large part, but Saudi Arabia was close to cutting a deal and they have cut a deal with Iran. And that is nightmares for Israel. Now, one of the questions people need to ask, which I should have mentioned in my little summary, is this. What happened to Israeli intelligence, right? Israel, that region is the most surveilled region in the world, more so than North Korea, okay? Most of the tech that is being used, or many of the tech companies that are being used in the Western world to surveil the Western societies, individuals, are Israeli companies, right? From tracking, from monitoring, from surveillance, to facial recognition, to tracking commerce. Israel is the most surveilled, Israel-Palestine is the most surveilled region of the world, more than China, right? How is it possible and I've heard some uh, live streamers, commentators uh, that have uh, from Israel, some of them from IDF, some of them from IDF, from the Secret Service region, from the intelligence area, mentioned that one person I would listen to yesterday, I believe, uh, she mentioned that the, the border guard there, the wall that they've set up in Israel, even if a cat comes near the wall, alarm bells will ring, right? And it's the most surveilled location in the world. So Israeli intelligence must have known something was going on, right? Now, was this a full-on false flag? Was it allowed to, uh, would they allow it, uh, allow it to happen? What was, why did it happen? Was it a failure of intelligence? Is it going to be used as uh, the justification to expand the war to go ape shit on uh, different countries different peoples who knows we've still yet to see how that's going to play out uh, hopefully um, things will quiet down we can only hope we can only hope